For our next topic, we're going to move into the world of transformations of functions. And I was trying to think of an illustration of this, and I thought of, you know, the Avengers. I thought of those, uh, um, those Marvel movies we've all seen, where we have sort of this initial person, Tony Stark, and he turns into Iron Man, where, you know, it's kind of cool. He has like, these blasters, and he can fly, and so on. And, you know, functions, transformations are kind of like that, where we've seen in grade 10, we have this basic function, this, you know, we dealt with a quadratic, and then we realized we could do a whole bunch of essentially distortions to it or transformations to it. We realized when we were kicking a soccer ball, we could, you know, kick a soccer ball, it flies through the air and it lands. And then we realized, well, we could kick it really high and short, or we could kick it really far, or maybe kind of short or kind of high and far. And then we realized we'd actually kick it the other way if we wanted to. And then, you know, theoretically, we could reflect it. We could, you know, this function could kind of go through the ground. So we had a, a number of transformations on a basic function. Um, these are the ideas we're going to continue with, but of course, we're not going to stay with just the quadratic function. So with the transformations, there's a number of different kinds, but we'll start with the easiest ones. There's horizontal and there's vertical. So remember, horizontal is like the horizon. So like in Coburg, you look down to Lake Ontario and you look you know, out to the horizon, you see a boat or whatever floating. So horizontal, horizon, left, right. So horizontal is left and right, and vertical is up and down. So this right now that's moving left and right, and the box will move um, vertically. Oh, one more, there it is, vertically, up and down. So remember for the vertical shift, what we call it, or vertical translation or transformation, we use the letter C. So here's our basic quadratic, it was minus three, so the function just slid down three units, or it was plus three, the function slid up three units. For a horizontal shift, we ended up using D, so here's our basic quadratic. If it was X minus two, remember it shifted to the right two. If it was X plus two, it shifted to the left two. Okay, what I wanna do now is just quickly bring up uh, Desmos. Because we use that to help us uh, see some of these things as well. So here I'll make a full screen. So here we have the basic quadratic y equals x squared, and then I have this d here on the outside. I have it as a slider, so d is zero right now. But as d gets bigger, the here I'll set this back down to zero too. Let me get out of the way for a sec. There we go. Okay. So as d goes up and down. Okay, the function goes up and down. So D is getting larger, 3.3. There's my, my um, Y intercept of 3.3. Say D hits four, so it's Y equals X squared plus four. So there's my plus four where it's hitting. You know, it could be here at five and so on. So as it gets, D gets larger, it moves up the Y axis. D is negative, it moves down the Y axis. And that, essentially that D on the outside just moves the function up and down. Okay, we've seen that before. And then with C, that's tucked within the bracket. So it's X minus C first and then squared. The C goes left and right. So here we are, that's the horizontal transformation as it moves, obviously. Interestingly, and this is where it gets a little, this is the tricky one in that it's true, I'm moving the slider to the right. And as I move the slider here, as I move the slider to the right, yeah, the function is moving to the right. So the slider goes to the right, function goes to the right. Same thing, slider goes left, the function oh, the function goes left. So that looks to be sort of um, in sync. And it sort of is, even even the values of C are getting larger. So C is positive, it's, it's moving to the right, it's true. But remember we have this little flip in that, it might be easier to see when it's negative. If I'm over here on the negative side, suppose I have C is negative three. So here I am over at negative three. Should you guys get the point? Yeah, there it is. So C is negative three. The thing has slid three units to the left. But remember our model is X minus C. So if I have X minus negative three, that's going to be X plus three. That's why we see that weird sign flip when we deal with the, the horizontal one. Okay, so those are the two, left, right, and, and up, down. Let's 
So we're not always going to deal with you know, exact models that we've seen before. So sometimes we're just going to have what we call a general function. So for example here, this is a function y equals f of x, and this doesn't really fit into the models we've seen. It's not a quadratic, it's not a, you know, it's not a cubic, it's definitely not a straight line. It's just kind of a bit of a, a made up specific function. We can execute our transformations on these functions as well. Now the best way to do it for us is we're going to use it by, we're going to do it by tracking points. We're going to keep an eye on some specific coordinates and transform the coordinates. We have to do that because if we just do it with the actual like squiggly line, then if we do some kind of transformation on some squiggly line, it's going to be really, really difficult to understand what's going on. But if we use specific points, that means we would know that suppose you had some point, you know, whatever, four, negative one, that point would have to transform, you know, into some other specific value. You know, suppose it's whatever, seven, four. So then we would know exactly what's happening. So that's the way we have to do it. We have to use points to do this. So here's just some general function, just basically made up. And suppose you're asked to sketch y equals f of x minus two. So this is just a vertical displacement of, of minus two. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract two. I'm going to slide everything down two units. So this 0.5, that drops down two, that drops down two, same idea, drops down two. Everything just drops down two. The x values stay the same. Suppose I have this one where it's x minus three. Now this is attached to the x itself. So that means this is a horizontal translation. And because it's minus three, I know it's weird, it goes the other direction. It moves to the right. So this moves right three. All these points basically move right three. And we're going to track it with the points. So it's this coordinate moves over to that coordinate. That's what I'm gonna be looking for. Okay, when we come to mark these things, I'm gonna be tracking what are the final coordinates? That's how we're going to do it. Okay, and here are the questions.